If you like to use organic soil, like most of us do, you'll really be interested in this system because this combines soil with hydroponics. This system uses a recommended organic soil and at the same time uses hydroponic capillary action to water the plant's roots. This is manufactured by Echo Growing Systems and their website is echogrowingsystems.com and it's distributed by Hydrofarm which you can reach at hydrofarm.com and of course it's endorsed by Echo Ernie so you know it's got to be good. I've already put this together but this thing really really was easy to, to install and I'm going to go show you in detail how I did it and I also made a modification or two that you may be interested in but it's not really necessary. Anyway, let's get with it. We have several sizes. This is the three gallon size. There's also a one gallon pot and five gallon pot and I think it goes up to seven gallons. But I thought that this three gallon would work okay. Here's what we have. First of all, you have a pack with parts. These are emitters and a pressure regulator to keep in the reservoir filled. Then you have several tubes. These are for all the pots. There's one tube per pot. Like so. Inside the pot you have a little platform that you can remove. There's the bottom of it. And it reveals a small reservoir. You can notice these holes around the edge. That's to allow drainage if you overfill that little reservoir. Well, it looks like this reservoir would probably hold about a pint and a half of liquid. So we'll check that out. Now the way this is assembled, we first of all put the reservoir cap inside. Then you attach the column. Now your emitter will go in here to keep the reservoir filled whenever you want to add water. This is the emitter which is attached to a hose which will deliver the nutrient solution or water into this column. Before we get too carried away there's a few things you need. If you're doing this indoors you'll need a good waterproof mat and also a container to put the pot in. And the reason you need this is basically an overflow container so that when you fill the reservoir you're going to get a little bit of weepage. That's how you tell it's full and it'll drip into the, to the little pan instead of on the floor. And one more thing before we fill the pots about this uh, soil reservoir separation plate. You see these indents here. The soil actually goes into these and there's holes in the bottom of that. And as you can see, there's also a little ridge that gives it the holes a little bit higher than the bottom of the reservoir. So what this does when you have soil in there, or you're potting soil, it creates a wick. And this is the way the water gets into the soil. So it keeps the bottom of the roots damp, but the top of the soil dry. Also very important, when you put the watering tube in, it will go in all the way down, but it's restricted by this lip. So there's always a gap, plus it's higher than the bottom of the pot, than the bottom of the reservoir. So you'll always be able to get water in there and never gets blocked. 
Here's how this system works. Water is emitted through the fill tube which fills the reservoir. The water is then pulled up through capillary reaction to the potting soil. This action provides moisture to the plant's roots while keeping the very top of the soil dry. I modified the separation plates to accommodate a 3 8 inch tube to test the effect on aeration of the water in the pot's reservoirs. This is just for testing and not a requirement for the system. Okay, we're ready to put our potting soil in. It's very important to make sure that this platform is centered and that you can see the weep holes around the edges. You don't want to get growing medium in your reservoir. So we're actually going to be using Roots Organic original potting soil. Now this is the stuff that's actually recommended by the manufacturer. This stuff has a lots of organic ingredients. The cocoa fiber, coarse peat moss, and perlite, humus, composted virgin forest material, worm casting, not to mention bat guano, kelp meal, fish bone meal, soybean meal, green sand, and alfalfa meal. I mean, you name it, it's in here. So now we're going to fill the bucket. You only want to put about half, make it about half full, because you need to plant, put the plant in, and pack some uh, growing media around there. So, force it down, but not not really hard, just nice and loose. Put about a half a, half a bucket full. Okay, and then get ready to place your plant in. All pots are about half full now, so we're ready to plant. So the next step will be to plant and also to get the hose set up and get a, a nutrient tank set up so we can start providing water to the reservoirs. Here's the connectors. You have an inlet from the pumper hose and there's a wire strainer in here, a pressure reducer and the outlet to the tube and then a two cross connections and one T. These will provide six pots. One, two, three, four, five, six. The strainer is enclosed in the inlet here. It's a wire mesh strainer. And you can pull that out and clean it. It doesn't have to be cleaned too often, I'm sure, as long as you have clean water and pretty easy just put it in there attach the hose from the pump or from the water supply and attach your pressure reducer to here so here you have it pretty much a piece of cake so here's what we're going to end up with we have our hoses hooked up and our emitters. We're going to leave them long, so if we have to move the pots a little, we can do that. But I've got the T on this end. Crossover here. Another crossover, and they're all connected together. And this final hose connects to the outlet of the strainer. Now what we have on this end is a submersible pump that should do the trick. 
hooked with a half inch hose and an adapter. This might be the hardest thing you'll have to find to the strainer to the outlet. Now this will go in this hole in the nutrient reservoir. So this is what we're going to have. It's going to come up here and put, we'll hook up the pump. We're also going to have an air stone coming out through the same hole. Now this air stone will keep the nutrient solution mixed and aerated. So now I've got a mixture of about 400 ppm of growth solution for our start. And we'll increase that as the plants grow. Coming out of this hole in the top of the reservoir is our strainer, an outlet, our hose to the air stone, and the cord for the pump. So now we'll put in the emitters. You can put them in about halfway. And once we have these in, we'll start the pump and fill up the reservoirs. I've just energized the pump. I can feel it running. Let's see what we're getting out of these emitters. Oh yeah. So this is working properly. It'll probably take about 15-20 minutes to fill those reservoirs because this is two gallons per hour. So we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. Let me check the end, make sure. Yeah, we've got plenty of flow. I think this baby's going to work. Now, like I said, I'm going to hook up an air supply to three of these to see what the difference will be uh, aerated and non aerated visible. That should be interesting. Here's another little test. This should start registering as soon as those uh, reservoirs fill up. So we'll see how that works. Actually, here's the, here's the uh, capillary area. That's totally wet, so it should start coming up pretty quick. Okay, it's starting to go, and also our moisture's increasing. And it took over half. It took about two two thirds of a five gallon bucket for the initial uh, filling. I think it'll take less as this stuff gets moist. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah, we're getting up there. So. It's working. So to plant, you just need to take your <coughs> take your tomato plant. We we uh, missed all the soil off these. We didn't have to, except we wanted to separate the two plants. So we can take these yellow leaves off here. And we're going to plant it fairly deep anyway. So, there's a little indent there. And just put new soil around it. And we haven't had to add any fertilizer to this because it has plenty of supplements in it already. And just put it up here. A little higher. Okay, that should be it. Now, for the first watering, you water from the top. This is the only time you're going to do that. From now on, and this is just to make sure that you get. Uh, moisture to the roots right away. It may not be quite deep enough to get that initial moisture. So, like I said, this is the only time you're going to top water. Now everything's planted. 
watered and ready to go. I have my little air hooked up, my little experiment on the out three buckets, which are actually the smallest plants. I think that would give it a good test. Make this solution bucket is all filled and ready. And a four output uh, air pump, three outputs to the bucket, and one output uh, to the air stone and the nutrient solution. So I'm going to give this a week, then show it again, and then do an update later. Here we are about 13 days later, we can see pretty significant growth. In fact, we started these plants, they were about 5 inches tall, and now we have 12 inches, so we have about a 7 inch growth. Also, there's beautiful, healthy growth here. Nice deep green, but not too deep. And there's not a significant difference between the aerated and the non-aerated growth. I think these pots are designed to give adequate aeration to the soil without any additional aeration. I'm very pleased with the re results of this system. The plants are getting very robust, nice thick stalks, very healthy, extremely healthy. So I think we have a winter here and it's very easy to maintain. I've only had to fill it once a week approximately and it maintains moisture really well. So looks like we got a winter folks. I highly recommend this echo brewing system to all those who wish to grow with soil as a growing medium. It provides excellent results as shown and I expect to get a lot of tomatoes off these plants. We'll have an update in a month or so. Now here's a couple of five gallon pots that I'm filling manually with some very very happy tomato plants in them. I'll give you an update on these later on too.